everyone, my name is Gabby and today I'm going to be breaking down my favorite movies of 2019 for all of you. This list isn't specifically films that have come out in 2019, a lot of them are relatively recent, but some of them are older, so it's just movies that I have seen this year. And as you all may know, I haven't really been doing as much reading, I've been watching more movies and binging more through TV shows because I've been taking so many English classes that I've just gotten burned out from reading that I've found my entertainment elsewhere. So we have a decent amount of movies to discuss so for that reason I'm going to just dive right in and we can get started. The first film on this list is none other than Captain Marvel starring Brie Larson. I loved this movie a lot. I don't know what it is that people had against it. I don't know if I would necessarily say it was one of the best Marvel films. I feel like I saw a lot of mixed reactions to this. Like there was people that really loved this movie, other people that didn't like it at all, people that felt ambivalent about it. I wonder why the mixed reaction is. Is it just because it is a female superhero that's taking the lead for the first time? Is it just because it seemed like it was an odd place to suddenly have this movie now? I like I don't know. I genuinely would be interested to see sort of the reasons why people didn't like this film as much because I personally thought it was great and I love getting to see the connection to all the other previous Marvel films like getting to see the Tesseract and getting to see the mention of Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy. I think there's lots of really great ways that this movie ties into the MCU and connects to the previous films that we've seen from the MCU. I also love the end credit scenes. I think honestly one of my favorite parts of this movie was getting to see Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson together because they have such great chemistry and I loved getting to see Nick Fury a little bit younger and more naive because I think it's fun to watch that character arc whereas his character when he is older and more experienced isn't maybe necessarily as exciting to me. I think I'm gonna like Nick Fury in Far From Home but he wasn't necessarily been my favorite in some of the previous MCU films but I do like seeing him younger. I feel like there's more of an arc more to explore there. Although Winter Soldier did a good job of sort of exploring Nick Fury and some of the things that he's gone through and really Captain Marvel helps to explain some of those things which was really cool. Uh, there definitely was a lot of scares with the eye because we all knew this movie was going to be in the movie where we find out how Nick Fury lost his eye because he has both eyes and so like it makes sense that we would find that out and so there were a few fake outs that I thought were funny because they like knew that you were expecting it. So I thought that was funny. I loved Phil Coulson was in this movie. It was just great. I had a fun time. The comedy was good. I definitely want to rewatch it because I enjoyed myself and I had a fun time watching it and I really can't ask for anything more and I loved getting to see a female superhero at the helm just kick ass and be like incredibly empowered. There were some really awesome moments in this movie that celebrated that but it didn't seem like it was in your face. It was just like this is a female superhero and she's empowered because she's empowered not because she's a woman and I love 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 that message. So this was a really good movie. I enjoyed it and I don't know why all of you were hating on it. Moving on the next film that I'm going to be talking about is one that I'm very excited that I finally got to see and that is Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh my goodness. Rami Malek was so wonderful in this movie and he 110% deserved his Oscar. I think for me it was actually quite fun because I watched the DVD of this to see some of the bonus features that deal with a little bit of the behind the scenes of how the film was created. So I specifically watched two that really struck with me. One was how the Live Aid performance at the end of the movie was shot. So it deals with like the CGI and how the entire crowd is put into the film. It deals with how the set came together. It also deals with the fact that this was the first sequence that they shot, which is crazy to me that the big inclusion is what comes first in the filming process because all the actors had to have gone through this entire journey. All the characters had to go through this entire journey to then reach this epic inclusion. So to do that first seems a little bit odd and in reverse, but that's really interesting to me. Also the fact that they filmed the entire Live Aid performance, so did every single song and then edited together the bits and pieces that make it into the film that I thought unique, um, that they went and filmed the entire thing rather than just the specific parts that they knew were going to be in the movie. There's lots of fun stuff that I found out about that. And then the other bonus feature that I watched had to do with Rami Malek and how he became Freddie Mercury and I think that was a really great way to sort of show off him and his performance and all the nuances that he had to take on to become that character because I think a lot of people really wouldn't think at the surface that it'd be that difficult to play Freddie Mercury other than just like doing some research and putting on a costume and just like reading the line. It's definitely not that simple at all. Rami actually had a movement coach. I thought the movie itself was really good. A lot of the actors look so much like the people that they are portraying and I know 
know that the story isn't entirely accurate and there are some things that are not in conjunction with the timeline and how things actually happen but I think for the most part as a story it does a really good job of showing off Queen as a band and how unique they really are because I think this movie one of the things that it also did for me is made me realize how many Queen songs I know that are just incredibly popular and just smash hits like it bothers me because I knew all of these songs and as I was hearing them I'm like oh that's a Queen song and that's a Queen song because obviously I knew Bohemian Rhapsody was a Queen song and We Will Rock You was a Queen song like there was a few that I knew like in my mind that I had registered were Queen songs but there was others that I didn't and I was like what is going on because obviously I didn't grow up in the time of Queen so I just knew the songs but I didn't realize and like make that connection and that movie like sort of helped to do that for me I feel like it was something I talked to my friends about and they got it it's I don't know I don't know how to explain this but like the movie made me more appreciative of Queen as a band and it also made me want to like go and see Queen on tour so the movie was good the next film that I'm going to be discussing is probably the most epic one on this list and that is Avengers Endgame oh my goodness I have been waiting forever for this movie to come out and by forever I mean like a few months I feel like there's lots of people that have been anticipating this conclusion far longer than I have but it still felt incredibly anxiety inducing because now I'd seen all the films and I was like I need to know what happens and it was killing me and I can't even imagine what it would have been like to have been on this entire journey for like 10 11 years and waiting to see this conclusion it was an intense ride I got to see the movie twice opening weekend and it was just announced today that the movie is going to be re-released in theaters next week with a whole bunch of behind the scenes and like extra bonus featurey type stuff so obviously I'm going to see the movie again because I'm trash and I have nothing better to do with my life I'm excited for whatever that behind the scenes stuff is so that'll be fun to get to see the movie again and then I am planning on doing a full discussion on this channel with some other booktube girls who also watch Marvel and essentially when the movie comes out on DVD we are going to plan a live show where we'll watch the movie together and get to discuss it because the movie's three hours I cannot possibly discuss it with all of you in this limited time frame but to give you my basic thoughts and opinions this movie was phenomenal there are so many wonderful moments in this film that really celebrate the MCU and all of the films in the most beautiful way by highlighting some of the really special moments in each of the films and helping to bring them to this conclusion there's so many other moments that are just so epic cinematically that are so perfectly fitting to wrap up this entire story that has been told for the past 11 years it's just crazy so many epic things that happen in this movie that I'm very very excited to get to discuss more with you soon but I would give this movie five out of five stars I know there's a lot of people that didn't like this film and had problems with it I can see why some people had issues with it but I also see the purpose of certain decisions that were made cinematically we're talking about Thor and his character and I mean, like there's some other things that I could get more into depth with but I thought the movie was good and I really had no problems with the storytelling and I think that it was a really really good conclusion and I was very very happy with where the story went and I just ah uh, adore this movie and I'm very very excited to get to see it again and to buy it on DVD and get to watch it over and over and over and hopefully get to discuss it in depth with all of you very very soon. The next movie on this list was one that I really wasn't going to talk about but I decided I was going to talk about it anyway because I don't know if a lot of people know about it and that is Last Summer. So this is on Netflix and essentially it follows a group of teenagers in the final summer from senior year to college so it's like the last time they get to see all of their friends before they all go off to different schools or take their own different life paths and so it deals a lot with friendships and romance and life decisions so your parents wanting you to do one thing and you wanting to do something else and I feel like it was a really good movie for me because I'm currently in that phase of my life so a lot of it I could really relate to also the movie was filmed in Chicago which is like my hometown that's where I'm gonna be going to college so it was really cool to get to see that the cast is a lot of actors that I recognize only problem that I had with this movie was Wolfgang Novogratz's character he's so sweet as an actor and seems so precious he's also going to be in the adaptation of Hush Hush which is exciting but his character bothered me a lot because he's just a terrible person and he just never learns his lesson and I felt so infuriated watching his character on screen that it almost felt like it ruined the entire movie for me because I'm like I want to like his character but he's so unlikable that it was bothersome especially because the writers go to like this whole effort to redeem his character only to have him two seconds later go back to doing exactly what he was doing before why <laughs> it's a 
whole, like, the movie was good. I enjoyed it. It was a good cast. It was fun. I just hated Wolfgang Novogratz's character. Not him. I think he's a wonderful actor and he played his character phenomenally, but his character's a douchebag. So there's that. A few more movies left to discuss. The next one that I watched was Unicorn Store. So this also stars Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson. This movie was really fun and I honestly had no idea what to expect from it. I found out, like, Brie Larson was going to be directing it and she was going to be starring in it. It was going to be dropping on Netflix and I'm like, I have to watch this. And so I did and it was really, really precious. I personally loved the ending more than any Anything else because I feel like it really sent a powerful message about being the truest version of yourself and embracing these things that society may tell you aren't okay because essentially there's the entire movie is setting up a contrast between this very bleak mundane world and the world of the main character played by Rhea Larson who lives very much in a fantasy and wants to own her own unicorn and has like very bright and colorful dreams and aspirations that tend to not really mix with society and life and I love Love how this film establishes that contrast and it's just a really really beautiful and quirky story that I love and I like getting to see more stories like that that are out of the box and I think that Netflix was the perfect place to get to showcase this film. Again Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson have such great chemistry this movie was just so much fun and I'm very glad I watched it because it was very cute and silly and lighthearted and uplifting. On a completely opposite note Another movie that I watched on Netflix that is a Netflix original is Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. This stars Lily Collins and Zac Efron that tells the story of Ted Bundy. So the person who was involved in this creatively, I think the director also did the Ted Bundy tapes that is on Netflix. I did not watch that, but I did watch the movie after taking my AP psych test because I was like, I just took the AP psych test and this kind of has to do a little bit with psychology. So I was like, it'll be a nice little treat to myself. Oh my goodness, this movie is so intense and I think it does a really good job of portraying the Ted Bundy story and especially getting to do it through Lily Collins' character's eyes because her character is the longtime girlfriend of Ted Bundy, so she feels like she knows him really well and would think that he is incapable of harming a fly and then all of these things start to happen, all these news reports, and suddenly she becomes suspicious and starts to realize that this person that she was in love with is a monster and I can't even imagine what it's like to go through that and Lily Collins just does such a phenomenal job portraying her character and really showing the hardships of what it is she went through and the emotional turmoil that she went through because of this and I think the thing for me that's really unfortunate is that I found out about this movie through the trailer because it was super interesting and eclectic and I know a lot of people freaked out about their trailer because they're like this is not the way that this story should be represented at all and I think the trailer is just a very big misrepresentation of what the movie is as a whole because it feels like the trailer has one tone and the movie has another tone and they're not consistent with each other at all so if you are worried about watching this movie because of the trailer I would go and watch the movie anyway because I feel like the trailer is just not consistent with the movie and the type of story that it wants to tell because the movie is very respectful of the story and portrays Ted Bundy accurately while also displaying his charisma and his charm and these things that were prominent about his character especially the way that he behaved in his trial and some of the things that he did that were very just like over the top and ridiculous in order to sort of get attention and draw more to his charm because that's something that people were drawn to. I just find him so fascinating. I think Zac Efron did a really really wonderful job bringing Ted Bundy to life on screen. I remember first finding out about this movie and being so fascinated by the idea of Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy and let me tell you I was so enthralled watching him. He truly was spectacular. Like I was incredibly enraptured watching this movie and I feel like that's exactly what the story is supposed to do but it also is hitting on a really really serious issue and I think it's done spectacularly. Very very glad I got to watch this movie because it deals with a lot of very serious topics and I think it addresses the Ted Bundy case and everything that happened with him in a very serious and appropriate manner. Again a completely different note. I feel like all the movies that I'm watching are just like all over the place. I watched the Pirates of the Caribbean film so I watched all of them and me and my friend are going to be going to Disney over the summer in about a month. One of the things that I wanted to do in that time was get to watch more Disney films to sort of prepare myself for my Disney trip because I haven't been to Disney World since first grade so I'm very very excited to get to be going back and of course I'm going to vlog for all of you but I wanted to watch the parts of the Caribbean movies and I'm very glad I finally did because they are hysterical and so much fun and so exciting to watch. Johnny Depp is phenomenal as Captain Jack Sparrow. I know that he is an actor. He's 
is very much defined by that character. So it's very exciting to get to see him on screen portraying that role because I even know him as Jack Sparrow but I never really got to see all the nuances of that character and I feel like Johnny Depp does a wonderful job of bringing Jack Sparrow to the screen and really making him a very fun and exciting character because at the surface he seems incredibly just like whimsical and like sort of all over the place and so a lot of people judge him as being dumb or just a pirate and so they underestimate him significantly but really Jack is incredibly bright and intelligent and conniving and manipulative and knows how to get what he wants. It's so fascinating to watch his character in the way that he navigates throughout these films and the things that he does because he's just brilliant. It's so fun and exciting to watch a character like that who's so multifaceted and Johnny Depp just plays him perfectly and I just had so much fun watching his character on screen throughout all of these films. I want to talk about Orlando Bloom because I'm going to be honest, really all I've known about Orlando Bloom for a large part of my childhood was from Hannah Montana because Emily Osment's character had a huge crush on Orlando Bloom and so there was always mentions of him and I was like, oh, okay. Several years later, I finally get it! <laughs> I watched Orlando Bloom on screen and I was like, that's Orlando Bloom. And then I made the connection to Hannah Montana and then I was like, oh my goodness, he's very charming and adorable and good looking and precious and wow. And I fell in love with Will Turner, just as Elizabeth Swan did. Kira Knightley was also wonderful and just a kick-ass female. Like, ah, I just loved all of that. So obviously I understand why people didn't like the fourth film because they weren't in it and it was sort of just like, what's going on here? Like, I didn't ask for this. Sam Clapham was in that movie. So originally, like when I was in my Hunger Games phase, I wanted to watch all the Pirates of the Caribbean films just to watch Sam. While I did love getting to see Sam in Pirates of the Caribbean, his film was particularly my least favorite just because I was like, eh. But the last one, the most recent one, is actually really good because you get to see a backstory for Jack Sparrow, which is so interesting that the final film would be the one that would give you the backstory of that character, but I also feel like it's a really brilliant choice because it just feels so fitting for this story and this universe and also for the character as well. And I feel like this film also brings in all the characters and ties them to previous ones and it's very very emotional and very beautiful and I had fun watching it but there definitely wasn't enough Orlando Bloom so I'm like still up in the air on which movie I think is my favorite I don't know if I could actually say but I feel like I did like the last one I felt like it was really good like well written and well executed for the most part so I'm glad I finally watched those films they were so 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 much fun and so entertaining and exciting and I feel like I'm finally starting to get into like action films and there's all these movies that I've missed out on for so long because I feel like they weren't within my interests and so now I'm finally getting to watch them and I'm so glad I watched the Pirates of the Caribbean films because I feel like I appreciate them more so now than I ever would have before. The next film that I'm going to be discussing is a book to movie adaptation that came out recently and that is The Sun is Also a Star. This is based off of the book by Nicola Yoon. I remember when this movie adaptation was first announced and so getting to see it come together and getting to see it on screen was really exciting. I actually got to see it with two of my bookish friends Emily and Ashley who you may know because I bring them up a lot on this channel. We had a fun time seeing it. I feel like I can't remember how much of what happens in the book happens in the movie but I feel like for the most part the story is consistent and also a really great thing is that it encapsulates Nicola Yoon's really unique writing style very well because I feel like there's points in The Sun is Also a Star and also in Everything Everything where she kind of takes tangents and does lots of new things where it feels like a contemporary version of the Illuminae Files which is so interesting and I love that the film still encapsulated that and still represented that writing style on screen in a really unique and really brilliant way. So I loved that. I loved Charles Melton as Daniel. Daniel is absolutely my favorite. I adore him. Charles Melton is so sweet and so precious. I got to meet him last April at Riverdale Con, so over a year ago, and he was truly the kindest and the sweetest, and I like had no idea what my experience was going to be like meeting him, but he truly was so much fun, and I feel like a month or two later I found out that he was going to be in The Sun is Also a Star, and I was super disappointed that I found out when I did, because I'm like, if I'd found out any earlier, I could have gushed to him about his role, because that's essentially what I did to KJ Apple when I met him with The Hate You Give. I am really sad I didn't get to talk to Charles about it, but I did get to meet him, which was really, really cool to get to have met, like, two people now who've been leads in YA adaptations, which is fun. But he was really wonderful in this movie, and I think uh, the entire cast was. So I enjoyed the movie. I think it was accurate to the book and helped to really encapsulate that message about the difference between science and just only what you can see and fate and love and some of those things that are intangible but are really special and you just feel. 
and I really love the story. I really love the movie. I'm really glad I got to see it because it was so cute. Finally, the last film that I'm going to be discussing with all of you is Detective Pikachu. So I did not think that I was going to be seeing this movie, but I saw the trailer. I thought it was cute. And on the last day of school, me and my friend Marissa went and saw it. And oh my goodness, it was hilarious. Honestly, I went and saw this movie because of Ryan Reynolds. I was like, Ryan Reynolds is Pikachu. I'm sold. Also, Justice Smith is in this movie and he was in Paper Town. So I was like, I can get behind that. And this movie just stole my heart. It was so funny. I was LOLing in the theater. And I feel like I haven't watched a movie where I've had like that type of comedic reaction in a very, very long time. It was just so funny and hysterical. I just loved Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. He was just everything. I thought the plot was also interesting and I just got invested in the story and what was going on with the characters. I knew absolutely nothing about Pokemon, but I just had fun watching it. I was just entertained. I mean, like, Ryan Reynolds is Pikachu. I feel like that's all I need to say. I mean, oh my god. And the movie also kind of got me a little teary out at the end. Like, I was, like, touched. It was cute. I just loved this movie. It was so great. I found myself, like, invested in the story and the world and the characters and what was going on. And if a movie can do that, then I think it's good and worthwhile. So that's about it for this video. The only other movie that I've watched is Men in Black International, but I kind of did a whole review in my Wonder Museum vlog, so if you want to check out that video and find out more about Men in Black International, I'll leave the link down below. I think that's about it. My camera battery's about to die, so I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, all the links are down below in the description. I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I will see you next time with a new one. Goodbye! I'm trying to find